I start these pictures with a process um, that has been described in other videos and I use a canvas board and I apply lovely warm colours to it. I then cover that in the next layer um, which will be the sky and the ground and I mix the colours for this first so I've mixed lovely greens on a palette and a light bluey grey to go in the sky and when I apply the paint particularly in the sky you leave it slightly translucent so that the original colours will hum through the light blue and when you put on the greens at the bottom you don't completely cover that lovely maroon red so those colours that you've initially applied will come will be allowed to come through I've got a clean brush so I've got some light blue that I've mixed here and I'm just going to cover this so this is just a panoramic board which I've already put acrylics on um, and it's just the undercoat because what I want is for it to come through on this layer so I want the colours to show through on this layer so I'm just putting in a sky because what I'm going to do is just turn this into a um, blossom tree picture and I want the actual colour to come through but I want it thick enough as well and I want to take it I want some of the land to show And smooth it over with something that's going to just uh, blend it all. It's just a soft brush, and I don't mind if it's not completely blended. I really like the colour coming through as well. And then, once I've, once I've done that, just move down into a bluey green to go into the horizon, to go into the land behind it. And I still want some of that lovely um, red to show, even if I take it down a bit afterwards. So again, just like so. And then I'm going to bring it warmer to the front with a bit of ochre. And still, hopefully the colours will come through. Warmer and with some darks as well. And I'm just getting some nice colours in there because I can develop this afterwards. But what I want is to go through it. And I'll show you in a minute. Right, and I'm just going to take that down at the back there, like as if there's a couple of fields coming through. And I'll take those marks off. something like that and that will do for now and then I get my lovely silicone brushes and I take off a tree take out a tree so I want a beautiful um, blossom tree that's just off it goes you know you know how beautiful they are they can be such wonderful shapes can't they and these wonderful pens are just beautiful for it. It works so well to mark out the the branches and you know the possibilities of it. So let's see. Because these are so responsive and respond to well they have a wobble of their own. A bit like a um one of those long thin brushes for that people use for doing branches and so on. A rigger, that's what they're called. So the idea is this is going to be, and then again, off it goes. And 
I don't have to get too confused and too fussy. But I want that out. I want it coming more at an angle. So, and then out. So that's going to be my tree. And those are going to be my lovely blossom branches. that'll do. Let that dry and then I'll work on it again. And really I've done enough of these to know what I'm doing so I can start to bring in some of the form as well and I want, I just want to know that these lines are nice so and all I want to do at this point is to start bringing in beautiful colours. I'm not particularly interested in finishing it. I'm just layering up colour that I like. I'm just beginning the forms and the possibilities. And I've done these so many times before I sort of know what it needs now. And what sort of colours look really well in it. It's nice to get, because the blossom is all light and airy, so it's nice to get sort of some nice um, darks into the tree trunks. But you can really play with the tree trunks as you go on, and thus it's just such a wonderful aspect of acrylics, isn't it? I made the, one, the branches that are further up lighter, and I can use all the pink that's there as well. And then go over them. So I've got an ochre here mixed with a white and a yellow. And I'm just sort of playing with the marks that I made before. Because I'm going to add loads of blossom to this so it's not going to matter. And really and truly these marks... And not, you know, they're not that important because some of the, a lot of it's going to be covered up with the blossom. But it's just getting the form in, a form that you like, that you're happy with, and that's interesting. Well, I want something coming down because there's, I like this blue in it. There's a, a blue and a purple work so nicely in this. And you can see, look, you just use the, all the forms, all the forms that you've already put on. You use the sort of lines that you made with your lovely silicone brush, and you can go back through it with a silicone brush as well. And just pull out colour and form. And I, I leave the brushes thick and dirty with the other colours, because I love that when it, when it has multiple colours in the one stroke, I really like that. I just think it's more interesting. I'm going to go off to lovely yellowy, lighter colours up off towards the edge. Um, and again, you don't have to, it doesn't have to be completely described. Just enjoy, really, because we're going to put blossom on top of this. Okay, that'll do. And let that dry. And you'll see when I put the yellow, um, put the blossom on. The forms can really change, but I do like the way this, these lines work with this method. Okay, there you go. For that bit, um, you can start bringing out some colour in the bottom at this point as well. And again, I just do it very... Um, I enjoy it. So I've just got my greens here. I just pull it through and enjoy the marks that it makes. And do not fuss too much. This, isn't, this is just the beginning and then through that I get the end of a brush or a twig and I start pulling through grasses. I've got a lovely thin skewer somewhere. Uh, where's my palette knife there? I just wanted that a bit greener across here and in patches you know and you can start thinking that you want you know, the sun catching to the front of it and you can think about sort of making light patches where the sun's come through the 
leaves of the blossom tree, but that's about it. And let that dry, and then go on to the blossom. Right, now to apply the leaves. I mix the colours that I want in batches on a palette and keep them to my left. So I've got pools of colours, and in this case it's the greens for the leaves. Uh, beginning with a light yellow, because I really think that adds a brightness and a sort of cheeriness to the picture, so you use the light yellow to sort of determine where the light might be landing on the tree, sort of at the extremities and at the top and so on. It just gives it more of a depth and a volume. And I use the light green to make light as well. You'll see that I'm following the sort of way that the branches might drop and that the leaves would sort of sit and form so that they describe twigs and branches coming down off the tree. There's a lovely light green. I've found that the easiest way to use the palette knife is to scoop the paint onto one knife in my left hand and then take the palette knife in my right hand because I'm right handed and that's the one that I'm actually going to apply the paint with and I take small daubs of paint off the palette on my left hand so that I apply more controlled daubs onto the painting. You sort of just got little leaf sized daubs on the right hand side palette knife. I think it's also quite important to try and vary your mark making. Sort of you almost vary the angle that you're putting your leaves on with, but also the applicator. So bunk some leaves on with a a paintbrush as well, just to change the shapes a bit. And you can see I'm even making the leaves fall with the gesture that I'm applying the paint with. So I'll alter the angle of my wrist in order to bring the leaves down in different ways. The other thing you'll notice is I'm applying the leaves and the branches to disrupt the boundary between the two parts of the picture, the top and the bottom. So it goes over the horizon and brings the two parts of the picture together. I use some of the paint that I've used to apply with the leaves, the same colour, on the floor and at the end I'll scratch through those with a skewer or a paintbrush end to make grass marks. You apply enough paint to form the basis of your blossom um, bunches. You're obviously not completely covering the tree with leaves, that's not necessarily because you necessary because you're using the blossom as well. And you again you apply the darker green into the areas that you want to be the underside of the branches a bit. And it just gives depth to the tree. I think here I come in with my skewer to make the grass marks and then I leave it to dry and can apply the blossom. Okay, so I decided on a, a blue, uh, on a white blossom tree because I've done other pink ones and I do the pink ones in just the same way and I'm putting some white slightly tinged with blue and green just so that it's not pure white all the time and I'm just going to build up my blossom marks and it makes a big difference when, it makes a big difference which tool you use because the sharp one makes much sharper little lines and the, the rounded end ones is a much sort of, it's more of a blob. So you choose which one you like. Um, I'm not quite sure how much this um, mix of white is going to just lie flat, but it doesn't matter because I can just keep adding to it. 
So I'll put use the darker the sort of grey green, the bluey green, very 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 slight touch of bluey green in it, more in the centre where it would be denser and perhaps even darker. I'm sort of assuming the light's coming from the top. And then I'm going to put bright white towards the outside. And I just build it up like so. And I sort of do it, do it, it because blossom seems to hang both in clumps at the end and sort of in lovely, and can hang in these lovely arms of it, sort of fingers of it. So that's what I'm going for as well. And I just really just gently and slowly just build it up until I'm happy with where it is. So I will put it on fast forward and not speak over it for a bit and you can see how I did it because I won't, won't do it in actual time. Okay, thank you. Oh, and also puts a few on the floor, especially with the darker ones because it just brings the two images together. The two at the top and the bottom are brought together more. So I just continue the process until there's enough detail and enough information and you feel that there's enough blossom to make a credible blossom tree. I alter the tools a little so that the marks are not too regular and too uniform. I will apply with a palette knife and with a paintbrush. So you alter the size of the blossom as well, the size of the blossom daubs. So I've used the light blue and light green and white and in the end I also use some light cream. It just seems to warm the picture up. And you'll see the background at the moment is quite light blue, grey. Well, I do change that because I found a nice bright carillion blue really adds sunshine to a picture. And in the end, I paint a carillion blue in between the blossom and the twigs, which was easier than you'd think. Again, I take the branches down over the horizon so you break the boundary between the two parts of the picture, the top and the bottom. I use some of the colour from your blossom on the blossom petals that have fallen on the ground and I will put leaves in front of the blossom that I've put on the ground in order to add perspective. And I'm very sorry, but I wasn't able to film the last bit when I finished this picture off. I mean, it's more or less good enough as it is. I'd be quite happy as it is. But I did take it a step further and didn't manage to film it. So I added the light carillion, or the bright carillion blue. But I also added the dark green leaves throughout, just to bring out a bit of contrast and the cream petals on the blossom. But I could have left it as it is. Okay, you see I've just absolutely filled it chock-a-block and I, as I say I do add a bit more. I didn't particularly like the way the blossom was hanging at the bottom there were two, min two regular fronds, so I added more blossom at the bottom and I just thickened up the density, generally. Um, when I added the cream, I also sort of painted over the petals that I had already applied. It wasn't necessary always to add loads more. And it, the more sort of variation in colour you add, the more sort of tonal... Um, subtleties there are, the more it seems to have a lovely volume if you add subtleties of colour. That was the finished blossom picture. So I in fact ended up putting a light blue behind the blossoms and then bringing more 
dots of blossom onto the top just so that it was sort of more summery and bright. The light blue in the back rather than the grey just lifts it, makes it um, more joyous rather than um, a bit intriguing and atmospheric. Um, it basically makes it a more um, commercial picture. Just to show you finished piece. And I will pop another piece of canvas board underneath, a panoramic board, like so. And put a very plain frame around it. And then it's ready to go out. Thank you very much for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and see you again. All the best.